Chapter 5 I stare into the face of a blonde-haired man. His blue eyes sparkled in the bright sunlight. He was dressed all in white. He wore a crisp white t-shirt tucked into baggy white shorts. A small round button pinned to a t-shirt read only the best in bold black letters. Uh, hi. I found a match to choke out. He flashed me a gleaming smile. He seemed to have about 2,000 teeth. Hey, guys. Everyone okay in there? He asked. His blue eyes sparkled even brighter. Yeah, we're okay, I told him. A little shaken up, but... Who are you? Elliot cried, poking his head out the door. The guy's smile didn't fade. My name is Buddy. I'm Wendy. He's Elliot. We thought you were our parents, I explained. I hopped down to the ground. Elliot followed me. Where are Mom and Dad? He asked, frowning. I haven't seen anyone, guy, Buddy told him. He started the trailer. What happened here? You come unhitched? I nodded, brushing my dark hair off my face. Yeah, on the steep hills, I guess. Dangerous, Buddy muttered. You must have been really scared. Not me, Elliot declared. What a kid. First he's shaking in terror and calling out my name over and over. Now it's Mr. Macho. I've never been so scared in all my life, I admitted. I took a few steps away from the trailer and searched the woods. The trees creaked and swayed in a light breeze. The sun beamed down brightly. I shielded my eyes with one hand as I peered around. No sign of mom and dad. I couldn't see the highway through the thick trees. I could see the tire tracks our trailer had made through the soft dirt. Somehow, we had shot through a clear path between the trees. The trailer had come to rest at the foot of a sharp, sloping hill. Wow. We were lucky, I muttered. You're very lucky, Buddy declared cheerfully. He stepped beside me, placed his hands on my shoulders, and turned me around. Check it out! Look where you guys landed! Gazing up the hill, I saw a wide clearing between the trees, and then I saw a huge red and white banner stretch high on two poles. I had to squint to read the words in the banner. Elliot read them out loud. King Jelly Jam Sports Camp. The camp's on the other side of the hill, Buddy told us, flashing us both friend with a smile. Come on, follow me. But, but, my brother sputtered. We have to find our parents. Hey, no problem, guy. You can wait for them at the camp, Buddy assured him. But how would he know where to find us? I protested. Should we leave a note? Buddy flashed me another dazzling smile. No, I'll take care of it, he told me. No problem. He stepped past the trailer and started up the hill. His white t-shirt and white shorts gleamed in the sunlight. I saw him that his socks and high tops were sparkling white too. That's his uniform. He must work at the camp, I decided. But he turned back. You guys coming? He motioned with both hands. Come on, you're going to like it. Ellie and I hurried to catch up to him. My legs trembled as I ran. I could still feel the trailer floor bouncing and jolting beneath me. I wondered if we would ever feel normal again. As we made our way up the grassy hill, the red and white banner came into clearer view. A funny purple cartoon character had been drawn beside the words on the banner. He looked like a blob of great bubble gum. He had a big smile on his face. He wore a gold crown on his head. Who's that? I asked Buddy. Buddy glanced up at the banner. That's King Jelly Jam, he replied. He's our little mascot. We're looking mascot for a sports camp, I declared. Sorry about the purple Bobby King. Buddy didn't reply. Do you work at the camp? Elliot asked. Buddy nodded. It's a great place to work. I'm the head counselor, guys. So, welcome. But we can't go to your camp, I protested. We have to find our parents. We have to... Buddy put a hand on my shoulder and a hand on Elliot's shoulder. He guided us up the hill. You guys have had a close call. You might as well stay and have some fun. Enjoy the camp until I can hook up with your parents. As we neared the top of the hill, I heard voices, kids' voices, shouting and laughing. The clearing narrowed. Tall pine trees, birch trees, and maples clustered over the hill. What kind of sports camp is it? Ellie asked Buddy. We play all kinds of sports, Buddy replied. From ping pong to football, from croquet to soccer, we have swimming, we have tennis. We have archery. We even have a marbles tournament. 
sounds like a cool place, my brother declared, grinning at me. Only the best, Buddy said, slapping Elliot on the shoulder. I reached the top of the hill first and peered down through the trees to the camp. It seemed to stretch for miles. I could see two long, white, two-story buildings on either side. Between them, I saw several playing fields, a baseball diamond, a long row of tennis courts, and an enormous swimming pool. Those long, white buildings are the dorms, Buddy explained, pointing. That's the girls' dorm, and that's the boys'. You guys can stay in them while you're here. Wow, it looks awesome, Elliot exclaimed. The pool is huge. Olympic size, Buddy told him. We have diving competitions, too. Are you into diving? Only inside the trailer, I joked. Wendy's into swimming, Elliot told Buddy. I think there's a four-lap swim race this afternoon, Buddy told me. I'll check the schedule for you. The sun beamed on us as we followed the path down the hill. The back of my neck started to prickle. A cool swim sounded pretty good to me. Can anyone sign for baseball? Elliot asked Buddy. I mean, do you have to be on a team or something? You can play any sport you want, Buddy told him. The only rule is that Kelly and Joe John Sports Camp is to try hard. Buddy tapped the button on his t-shirt. Only the best, he said. The breeze blew my hair back over my face. I knew I should have had it in the cup before vacation. I decided I'd have to find something to tie it back with as soon as I get into the dorm. A soccer match was on the way on the nearest field. Whistles blew. Kids shouted. I saw a long row of archery targets at the far end of the soccer field. Buddy started jogging toward the field. I always sat there beside me. Hey, we want to go to camp, right? He said, grinning. Well, we made it. Before I could reply, he tried it after Buddy. I brushed back my hair one more time, then followed, but I stopped when I saw a little girl poke her head out from behind the white tree trunk. She appeared to be about six or seven. She had long, bright red hair and a face full of freckles. She wore a pale blue t-shirt pulled down over black tights. Hey, she called in a loud whisper. Hey, I turned to her, startled. Don't come in she called. Run away! Don't come in!'